Hi everyone, meteorologist Joe Choppy here, SNS Storm Chasers, meteorologistjoechoppy.com, weatherlongisland.com as we take a look at the tropics and one of the things that we've noticed overnight with regards to uh, the disturbance known as 99L is now moving over the Leeward Islands. It has become uh, better organized and much more concentrated. You can see it's taking on that circular appearance uh, that systems uh, start to take on when uh, they're in the process of developing. So. Uh, it, it seems to me like this is going to become a tropical depression in the next day or two as it continues its move toward the west-northwest. Behind it, we have her, uh, tropical storm Gaston, which should be a hurricane by later today. It continues to uh, organize and strengthen uh, as top winds are 70 miles an hour, and this should become a hurricane sometime uh, later this uh, later today or certainly by this evening. But the main focus of tab attention is going to be 99L. Now, I want to show you, uh, because there's all kinds of the stuff that gets around with these sorts of things in that, um, <clears throat> there, you know, you, you see these maps being thrown up on the internet. It's a threat to this place, that place. I'm just going to tell you, when you look at this upper air chart that I drew from, la uh, from uh, um, Tuesday night, there's uh, this is the European forecast for Saturday morning, and you have an upper high sitting along the Virginia North Carolina uh, border, uh, and that upper high extends out into the Atlantic to about 65 west, and it extends westward to about 90 or 95 west. When you have an upper air that looks like this, you cannot bring storms up the east coast. This is a, an effective brick wall. You have westerly winds in the upper layers of the atmosphere going from the Great Lakes to northern New England. Uh, you know, those westerlies extend down to about New York City, southern New Jersey, around the periphery of this high. And then you have easterly winds aloft. In other words, winds aloft blowing from east to west from the Carolinas southward into Florida. Okay, so you cannot have a tropical system bucking that upper high unless that upper high breaks down. You can you can sit here all day long and jump up and down and say that it's otherwise, and it's just not the case. The other thing to point out is that there's a weakness in the in the ridge out along and east of 60 West, and you can see there's a second ridge right here, a second upper high. So with that split, Gaston is going to react to that split and move up to the north and the northeast. Models have been consistent on that for days and days. There's almost there's no argument there. Um, so it's not really a, an issue. So the question is, w what kind of a system are we going to be dealing with with regards to 99L when it moves uh, into position uh, into the Bahamas? And I'm just going to now show you the European model. And I want to go back to that concept I just pointed out about the upper high. Uh, that upper high is right here on the European. Uh, uh, this is initially, and as we move along, now we're at Sunday, uh, Saturday night. Very strong upper high along the East Coast. This is a reflection of the tropical system in the Bahamas. This is Gaston. And that high really does not break down at very much at all. So as long as that's the case, um, this uh, system, at least by the standards of the European, is deflected further northwest and, and, in, and in fact takes a major hurricane uh, inland into uh, East Texas, right along the Texas-Louisiana border. Uh, by the uh, um, by Tuesday night of next week, and Gaston, meantime, is going out to sea. Uh, so, you know, this is going to be very interesting to see. That, that ridge is going to be everything here in terms of what happens. And I'll show you the GFS model. Now, the GFS has a... a has the ridge, but it's a little bit different. It also doesn't really develop uh, the system all that well. The European develops into a major hurricane. The GFS really doesn't do very much with it at all. So um, that's a that's something to consider uh, if the Europe if the GFS is correct that the system does not develop to the extent that the European does. The European, however, has been consistent now for several runs in developing a major system going into the Gulf of Mexico. And I just want to show you, uh, before we um, wrap this up, uh, and we'll go to the HWRF model, uh, which is a one of the hurricane models. And this is by Monday morning. 
uh, it takes its time developing this system. It doesn't develop it as quickly as the European does. Um, you can see where that low is. It's almost non-existent when we start or start it off. You can see it there, and then it just kind of disappears. Um, although you do have low pressure here, an inverted trough of some kind, and then um, as we move through uh, time, <clears throat> the low reappears in the Bahamas, and then it begins to develop. And by uh, Sunday afternoon, we have a strong tropical storm, and then by Sunday night, we have a minimal hurricane going into um, South Florida. Now, the HWRF is uh, slower than um, the European is, um, but um, we'll show you for the same time frame. Also, switch to the European again, and you can see this is by Sunday night. The European already has that as a hurricane uh, out into the south, into the um, eastern Gulf of Mexico. So this pretty much wraps it up. Uh, we're going to watch the situation closely. Um, the National Hurricane Center uh, continues to increase the probability of this becoming a tropical depression. In the next uh, three or four days, it's now over 80%. And uh, my suspicion is that they'll have an Air Force reconnaissance aircraft maybe flying into this later today because it does show some signs of organization uh, during uh, uh, the overnight and during the morning hours. Have a great day, and don't forget, SNS Storm Chasers and Meteorologist, JoeChaffee.com and WeatherLongIsland.com for all your latest weather needs.